So in the wake of the tragic mass shooting in Las Vegas the other day, there has been unsurprisingly yet another national conversation about guns and gun control. And as a person who publicly comments on current events, I often get asked my opinion on these kind of things, especially because the gun debate is a pretty controversial one in America. Outside of America, I think it's a lot less controversial. So if this video seems odd to you, I apologize. And I've talked about this before on social media, but I thought I'd make a video that I could direct people to if they want an overview on my views on guns and gun control. If you don't want an overview of my views on guns and gun control, then you can watch something else. Watch Jimmy Kimmel or something, I don't fucking care. So what is my opinion on guns? They're dumb? <laughs> Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. This video is made possible by my awesome patrons. If you'd like to join the custodial crew and support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash the one janitor. So this is a hard topic to discuss in America because it's one of those things that people get worked up and emotional about. And part of that, if not most of that, is due to propaganda from politicians and special interest groups. Obama's coming to take your guns. Obama's not the president anymore. I said Obama's coming to take your fucking guns. So when people have extreme emotional convictions about things, it can really impair their ability to think critically or acknowledge reality. And I feel like that happens in this debate on both sides to some extent, but mostly on one side. Speaking of which, this is a topic about which a lot of people argue that the moderate or centrist position is the correct one. This idea that both sides makes good points, but I don't really think that's true. I think almost every anti-gun control argument is ridiculous. So first of all, I want to emphasize that guns are stupid. There's this idea that some people have that guns are good or that they add value to the world. And that's just not something that's supported by reality. Now that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. Like I have these non-prescription eyeglasses. That's pretty stupid. So it's not just that it's stupid, it's stupid and dangerous. And there are other things that are dangerous like cars or circular saws, but they add value to the world arguably. They are not stupid like guns are. The only thing that guns are good for is causing harm, chaos, and death. And I don't like any of those things. Now it's argued by gun proponents that guns are also good at preventing harm. In fact, a 2014 poll indicated that over 60% of Americans believe that having a gun makes them safer. But again, this view is not supported by reality. Plenty of studies have been done which show that gun ownership rates are strongly associated with firearm related homicide, suicide, and accidental death. In other words, owning a gun makes you more likely to be killed by a gun. Buying a gun for self-defense is like buying a blowtorch to prevent your house from catching fire. And humans are known for doing irrational things just because it comforts them. But this isn't only irrational, it's also potentially deadly. We have to wake up. I have these glasses, which I think I look very handsome in, by the way, because I can, basically. And people apply the same thing to guns. That's the good old Second Amendment. The First Amendment is so good. How'd they fuck up so hard on the second one? But it's true. In America, citizens have the right to own guns for self-defense and private use. I personally think the Second Amendment has been thoroughly misrepresented and in general is just outdated, but we can talk about that another time. The Supreme Court of the United States has on multiple occasions ruled that the Second Amendment guarantees individuals the right to own firearms. It's the law of the land. But since guns are stupid and also dangerous, I think it makes sense to create laws that limit access to them, thus resulting in less harm. But a lot of people see this as infringing upon their right to bear arms. And you can make a decent argument that that is exactly what that is. For example, if people made laws that restricted and limited access to voting, I would probably argue that you were infringing upon people's right to vote. But who would ever do something like that, am I right? So what it boils down to is figuring out which thing you think is more important. Your right to unrestricted access to guns or the well-being and safety of the people around you. If you haven't figured it out already, 
I like the second one. One of my personal criticisms of modern conservatism is that a lot of people who fall into that category seem to care a lot about ideas, but not so much about the practical implications of those ideas. Like the religious right pushes for abstinence only sex education, even though many studies show that that results in more unwanted pregnancies. Or fiscal conservatives push for supply side economics or trickle down theory, even though multiple analyses show that this results in a weaker economy. And it's the same thing with the gun debate. In some cases, I think people and organizations knowingly do this for their own personal gain. For example, the National Rifle Association constantly dismisses the idea that guns cause more harm than good. But in 1996, the NRA lobbied Congress to prevent the Center for Disease Control and Prevention from even doing research on gun violence. It was framed as a law meant to stop the CDC from using government funds to advocate for gun control. But that's stupid because any research that showed that guns do more harm than good, which they do, could be interpreted as advocating for gun control. But even beyond that, Congress ended up cutting the CDC's budget by the literal exact amount that was allocated to them for gun violence research. So it was a pretty transparent de facto ban on gun violence research that occurred as a direct result of NRA lobbying. So in my view, the NRA obviously knows that gun control is effective and that guns cause more harm than good, or else they wouldn't have put so much effort into preventing people from researching it. Yet they still propagate that narrative because it benefits them. But still, some people actually believe anti-gun control arguments. One of the most common ones is that if you ban or restrict guns, then only criminals will have access to guns because criminals don't care about the law anyway. This is an extremely silly argument. For one, it ignores the fact that making guns easily available certainly aids criminals who want to use guns to do crime because they're easy to get. Secondly, it implies that criminals are the only people who cause harm with guns, which isn't true. It's not just crazy, evil criminals going around shooting people. Normal, everyday people get access to guns and in a state of heightened emotion may commit a murder, not to mention suicide and accidental deaths. And lastly, and most notably, it implies that laws are useless because criminals don't follow them. What? I mean, why make murder illegal? Criminals are gonna murder anyway. Do I really need to argue why having laws is good in spite of the fact that criminals don't follow them? The phrase criminals don't follow the law is what us pedants like to call a tautology. It's redundant. It offers no information. It's not an argument. Of course, criminals don't follow the law. That's the definition of a criminal. But again, this is something that isn't supported by the existing data anyway. Another major anti-gun control argument is that gun control doesn't work. And in fact, while I've always thought that guns were stupid, I used to believe this, or at least was ambivalent about it. Because there are individual case studies where an increase in gun control legislation seemed to have no effect on gun violence. Now, even if it were true that gun control doesn't work, if something doesn't work, you don't just throw it out. You fix it until it does work. But fortunately for us, this isn't true. Yeah, you can cherry pick specific case studies out of context and get the results that you want. But the overall trend across the whole fucking world is that more gun control is strongly associated with less gun violence. And gun reform almost always leads to a dramatic reduction in firearm deaths. There's this common assertion that's a part of the pro-gun mythos that gun control actually leads to more gun violence and more death. And this is based almost entirely on the work of this one guy called John Lott. He wrote this book called More Guns, Less Crime, which has been literally referred to as the Bible of the gun lobby. I will drop links with more information about this, but in short, Lot's research has been thoroughly epically debunked by multiple sources. His research was lazy and disingenuous and clearly agenda-driven, yet he is still widely cited by gun advocates. He's like the number one guy they go to when they wanna try and prove that gun control doesn't work. He constantly makes appearances on conservative outlets, so this outright myth lives on. If you're not sure about the research concerning the relationship between gun laws and gun violence, you can do your own study right now. Here's what I want you to do. It's gonna be fun. Look up the number of gun deaths per year in every state in America. See if you can find a credible list. Now, after you do that, open up another tab and then look up which states have the most lax or the most strict gun laws. And just compare the two lists. Uh, get back to me, tell me what you found. So really, in my view, the only legitimate pro-gun argument is that you've got the Second Amendment right to bear arms. 
You do. But we know for a fact that smart gun control legislation results in reducing the number of firearm related deaths. We're not even talking about banning guns. We're talking about reasonable restrictions and limitations on access to them. If that offends you more than unnecessary human death, you and I are fundamentally different people and you kind of scare me. Real quick, I wanna talk about assault weapons. The argument about assault weapons is related to the overall gun control debate, but it's a separate discussion and the two discussions should not be conflated. I use assault weapons in quotes because that term doesn't really mean anything specific. Like it's not an official term. Like an assault rifle is a thing, but that usually refers to military grade weapons that civilians can't legally get. But colloquially, we're using the term assault weapon to refer to high powered or high capacity firearms, ammunition, and modifications that are designed for attacking large or armored things or for killing lots of things very quickly. It's true that mass shootings don't account for a large percentage of the overall gun death toll, but mass shootings are a phenomenon that happens far more frequently in the United States than anywhere else in the world. And it's a type of thing that these kinds of weapons can make very easy to carry out. I think it's fair to assert that without access to a weapon that makes it very easy to kill a lot of people very quickly, a person who wants to kill a lot of people very quickly would have a much harder time doing so. You just can't physically kill 30 people in 15 minutes with just any gun, unless you're fucking John Wick or something. So while mass shootings don't account for a large percentage of the overall gun deaths, I'd still argue that they happen way too often. And I think it's worth it to make an attempt to reduce their frequency. And since we know in general that smart gun control legislation can reduce gun deaths, that seems to be a pretty good place to start. Now changing the law is just one step. We've also got to change this gun crazy culture we live in in America. And we have to be more thoughtful and practical about what's actually going on in the world. And like I said, a lot of this is due specifically to lobbying and propaganda from special interest groups like the NRA. It's almost impressive impressive how the NRA has thoroughly shaped the conversation about guns in America. But one day we have to wake up. And I also acknowledge that there are layers to this. There are socio-political factors. There's war and religion and mental health issues. And I do understand that guns are a tool and in order for guns to be used for violence, there has to be a person pulling the trigger. But it's a tool that makes that far too easy to achieve and much more likely to happen. That's just me though. What do you think? Thank you for watching my video, and thanks once again to all of my patrons. And remember, stay Heiko.